I'm the principal of Swanson School in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and Swanson School has about 500 students. They range in age from about 5 to about 12, and we've been part of the university study for the last two or three years. One of the things that uh, happened just out of the blue was uh, somebody from the Otago University and the Auckland University of Technology turning up one day and saying, uh, would you like to be part of a study that looks at um, bullying, trying to do away with it in a playground, uh, obesity, um, all the sorts of problems and issues in playgrounds and in schools that we see today. Now, it sounded like an interesting idea, so we said yes. And uh, we wondered what was going to happen, and, and there were various theories about modifying the play environment in some way, trying to get kids to become more active in some way. And what we ended up doing over the next couple of years was to actually modify the play envi environment by taking away all the rules. So how has children's play changed over the years? Well, it has become a much more adult supervised and adult directed activity. When children used to play, they used to be on their own and they used to determine what they were going to do themselves. Over the years, adults have designed playgrounds and play structures for them and they have become much more the supervising force. And essentially, it's probably because of the very best of reasons, and that is because we don't want children to get hurt. We've heard of helicopter parenting. We've heard of wrapping students in cotton wool. And we do that for the very best of reasons. And schools, who are, of course, <clears throat> in loco parentis, and we care very much about kids, we've bought into that as well. I know of, of schools in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, where you're not allowed to carry a cup of hot coffee or soup down the corridor in case you might spill it on a child. Play fighting is often banned. Recently in the news, there was an Australian school that had banned all touching, including high fives. There was a Canadian school in the news not long ago that had banned stick games. Apparently they were pretending that the sticks were lightsabers. Of course, we come from Auckland in New Zealand, so I mean our sticks are just simply swords. <laughs> so basically, we've got where we are today for the very best of reasons, and that's to look after children. So what do children learn through play? And what can we be limiting them? Well, children learn a whole lot of stuff through play. To the uninitiated, play is op an opportunity for children to muck around. And in fact, play is where children learn to problem solve. They learn to communicate with each other. They learn to take turns. They learn to win and to lose. The kinds of skills that we actually want kids to learn. And perhaps not the kinds of skills that we are used to schools teaching. Literacy, numeracy, science, technology, all of those sorts of things. But they are the kinds of lessons that we all want children to learn. And in particular, probably the key lesson is to manage risk. When children play on their own and they determine what they are doing, they are learning to manage risk. And when adults direct their play too much, they are taking that over. So they're actually managing the risk for the children. So what does play look like at Swanson School? Can we play the video, please? Kids at Swanson School, of course, can play on bikes, including riding up and down staircases and grass banks. The sort of thing you would have loved to have done. They play with junk. Junk is very big at Swanson School. There's a man on a mission. You can see all the junk in the background there. These two girls have got an old fireman's pole from a, a playground we used to have, playground structure. And they're very much involved in construction. These are some of the huts that you see under the trees and around the trees. 
see old tires there. This is what we call the loose parts pit. The loose parts pit was just a bunch of junk put together in one place. Scooters, that was a mudslide in the wintertime, that area. And this time of the year, the scooters are all over the school. All sorts of tricks, amazing skills. Kids climb whenever they get the opportunity. Climbing and swinging is what kids do naturally. In fact, girls prefer dynamic movement. This is marvelous. This was an old fire hose in the uh, loose parts pit. Climbing. Kids love to climb. And they've climbed for many years. This is an area called the wilderness. We simply stopped mowing the lawns. <laughs> and this is a truck tire in the middle of the field. Fantastic. So what do we do at Swanson School that's a little bit different? Well, all we do is encourage free play. Now, free play is simply children determining what they do. And by minimizing the influence of adults in that play, we allow them to learn all sorts of things. So how do we make those changes? Well, I prefer to call it <clears throat> evolution rather than revolution. What we did was we actually just stopped saying no. So when a child started to climb a tree, and we hadn't traditionally allowed them to climb trees, we just simply turned a blind eye. We didn't say anything. When a child started riding a bike, we didn't say anything. We just let them do what they wanted to do. And of course, kids push the limits. That's one of their jobs. And occasionally, you'd let them do something, and they'd sort of look around to see if anybody was going to stop them. And they didn't. And that is what we ended up doing to make it happen. So what sort of benefits have we found from our free play initiatives? Well, our kids at Swanson School are much more independent. They are fully engaged in what they're doing. They're enjoying what they're doing. And I mean, let's face it, if we as adults, just like kids, get an opportunity to do what we want to do, we're going to be fully engaged in that. And they might skin their knee or get some kind of an injury, minor injury. Or there might be some kind of conflict or altercation with the kids that they're playing with. What our kids don't do is they don't interrupt their play and go and find an adult to help them sort it out. They sort it out for themselves. And that's what you used to do when you were in the bush or in the backyard. Okay, that's what you did when you were on your own because there were no adults around to help you. So those sorts of things are the kinds of things we didn't really expect our kids to become more independent. We probably expected them to become a little bit more creative, and we expected them to maybe solve problems on their own, and yes, they did do those things. One of the surprising things that happened was that we saw a decrease in bullying. I was actually sitting with a Canadian journalist in my office, and my office overlooks the playground, and uh, as we were talking, I, I pointed out two boys who were hooning across the courts, one on a bike, the other being towed behind on a skateboard, having a wonderful time. And I pointed out to the journalist, I said, those two boys are the biggest bullies in the school. Principals know who they are. We always know who the bullies are. And bullying is a human condition. It's not something that happens at school, just at school. It happens everywhere in adult environments. We always need to look after bullying. We need to be vigilant and make sure that we're aware that it's happening and do something about it. But I can't remember the last time that those boys were bullying in Swanson School. And I'm wondering, and I'm still wondering, whether in fact it's because they're busy. Do bullies bully because they're bored? I don't know. And actually, all we want to do is carry on doing what we're doing because actually there are less injuries. There is less bullying. Our kids are more independent. Why would we change? So what does the playground at Swanson School look like? Well, you saw a little taste of it there. And in fact, it's chaotic. You look out the window, you walk through the playground. Sometimes you feel as if you're Moses parting the waters as you walk through the chaos around you, and it looks messy. You know, when you see the junk under the trees and the grass is growing long, yes, it does look messy. But it looks 
like an environment where children might also get hurt. And that's the thing that people notice. We don't want children to get hurt. And people, actually, the kids don't get hurt at Swanson. By and large, serious injuries are down in a big way. Kids are managing their own risk. They are relying on themselves rather than relying on adults to do that for them. Now, some would assume a playground with no rules results in bedlam. And, and we haven't ended up hosting a sequel to Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Bullying and conflict and serious injuries are down, and concentration, problem solving, and creativity are up. The kids are busy. They're motivated. They're engaged in what they're doing. We actually don't have a time-out room anymore. We don't need one. The kids don't get into involved in the kind of conflict that used to happen in the playground. There are fewer teachers on duty looking after things. And when they are there, they're there chatting to the kids. So how did the teachers think of it? Well, in fact, getting there wasn't the easiest with the teachers. As far as the parents were concerned, we didn't actually directly consult them. What the parents would, were seeing was basically happy kids coming home from school. Now, if you're a parent, what do you want? You want your kids to be happy coming home from school, preferably tired. <laughs> now, our kids are very active. So in fact, they ended up coming home from school, saying things like, and the parents must have known what we were doing, because they said, Mr. Mac says I could climb a tree. Mr. Mac says I can build a hut. Uh, I, I, Mum, can you help me take my scooter to school? Because Mr. Mac says I can ride my scooter. They must have known what's going on, and in fact, they very much do so now, and they're very supportive, but the teachers were there all day, every day. And in loco parentis, they didn't want to appear neglectful. They didn't want it to seem as if kids were getting hurt on their watch. So yes, there were some teething problems, but we've been doing it for a while now, and uh, the international media attention has been amazing, all very, very positive, and most of the questions that are asked always include the question, do you think we could do that as well, whether it's Australia, the States, Canada, Scotland? And the answer is, I don't know. Maybe. We Kiwis, we tend to do things a little bit differently. We, we like to ask for uh, forgiveness rather than permission. Uh, our Ministry of Education, which for all its faults, allows a considerable amount of freedom for schools. We have what's called ACC, which is a national insurance scheme that covers injuries when you've hurt yourself doing anything, playing sport, playing. So when we don't have a litigious environment. Parents aren't likely to sue a school. They're likely to take their child elsewhere. And growing up, part of growing up, is hurting yourself a little bit. Okay, it's hard to let children get hurt on your watch, but actually it's good for them. Put your hand up if you had a cast at school when you broke your arm or your leg. Put your hand up. All right, look around here, okay? Look at all those casts. A rite of passage, right, hands down. Now put your hand up if you were like me. You didn't have a cast, and boy, you wanted to break your arm so that you could be. <laughs> put your hand up. Yeah, look around. Those are the wussy kids. So in fact, what do you do? when you are making mistakes and getting a little bit hurt, you learn from that. You learn very valuable lessons. Maybe it's a good idea for an eight-year-old boy to get hurt when he's climbing a tree, to test himself. At age eight, up a tree, maybe on a scooter, maybe it's better for that to happen than for an 18-year-old boy to test himself behind the wheel of a car. Thank you. <laughs>